Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you the basics of aluminum welding. All right, so if you've never welded aluminum before, this video is for you. Now, it does have its similarities to welding carbon steel, stainless steel in technique, but it does have its differences that makes it more difficult than those. The main thing that we are changing is, instead of running direct current electronegative like you would for carbon TIG, stainless TIG, now we're gonna be running alternating current, AC. Well, with aluminum, you can attempt to run it in DC negative, like you would carbon or stainless. Problem is, that puddle is not gonna run very smooth. The reason we really have to run aluminum on alternating current is, we actually need a cleaner, or what we call a scavenger effect. So, with aluminum, the reason we have to have it is because, well, you have a, what we call an oxide layer that is a protectant on aluminum. That actually is its corrosion resistance. Well, unfortunately, that corrosion resistance film that's on here takes a lot more heat to actually burn out than it does to actually melt the aluminum puddle. So with alternating current where it's flipping between negative and positive terminals, when it flips into the positive terminal side, that's where we get that cleaner scavenger effect. It actually digs that film out to expose the aluminum puddle so that way we can actually weld it. Because if you were to put it in DC negative and do it, like I said, it's going to make a puddle. It's going to run really rough, but the problem is you can't burn out that oxide layer. Or if you generate enough heat to finally get it to burn out, issue is you've generate so much heat in this aluminum, more than likely for this little thin plate we got here, you'll melt right through the back side of it just to get the heat enough to burn that film out. This is the main reason we have to have alternating current on there. Another difference with aluminum compared to stainless steel, carbon steel, or other metals is actually options of gas. Now, we are running straight argon, which will fully work, but for aluminum, another type of gas that is preferred is actually helium. Reason being is aluminum actually likes to get warm compared to stainless where you try to always keep it cooler, stuff like that. With aluminum, if it's not preheated up to a certain temperature, depending on its thickness, that puddle does not like to run. So adding helium is either straight helium or an argon helium mix. That helium produces that more heat to actually melt the rod, melt the plate. So without it, you got your other options of, you gotta do a preheat with either like a butane torch, something like that, or even two, you can use the TIG torch arcing up and getting enough amperage to keep a constant arc, but not enough to melt the metal and actually just run your torch back and forth as a preheater also, which can work, but it all depends on the thickness of metal. Us running this thinner aluminum, not necessarily do I really have to give it to preheat just because it's so thin, it's gonna generate it pretty rapidly on its own. But if we were running something much thicker, yes, we would definitely have to preheat, possibly kick in some helium just to get that extra heat I need to create this puddle. With running aluminum, you do have to have a little bit different of a setup versus stainless, carbon, maybe even titanium if you were gonna be welding that. Main thing we need is a machine that can run alternating current, AC. So if you don't have a machine that doesn't have that capability, unfortunately, you won't be able to weld aluminum the proper way. Like right now, we're running on a Lincoln Square Wave 200, which is capable of AC. There's many other ones, Lincoln, Miller, ESOB, they're all capable of it. If you're looking to weld aluminum, gotta make sure you have that certain model that's capable of it. But also too, you need a remote, whether that be a foot pedal like I have here, or there is attachments you can get for your TIG torch, whether it be the button style remote or the finger roller style, which actually works just like a pedal where I can adjust my amperage as I see fit to the puddle, whether I need more heat, less heat, anything like that. Now the button style, you won't get that. It's basically just an on off remote. But like I said, with aluminum, you're definitely going to want some adjustability because that metal does get hot. Aluminum absorbs heat very fast. So there's a lot of tempering of the temperature and the amperage ranges as you weld. Now also another thing that is different from stainless and carbon to aluminum is actually the tungsten. Now you still can use 2% surge thoriated, thoriated, pure tungsten, which actually is a better choice for aluminum, mainly because it doesn't hold a point. With that aluminum, actually you kind of want a dull tipped tungsten. There are some people out there who love to pre-ball their tungsten prior to the weld, or they leave it a sharp point and let the alternating current when it goes into the positive terminal side of the flip start to ball it for you. Now, the reason we do ball it is because, or run a dull tungsten, is aluminum actually kind of prefers a small, long arc effect. Now, the difference is between obviously leaving it sharp and welding and just letting it kind of ball back itself versus pre-balling it is really 
essentially when you pre-ball it you slow down the burn back rate of the tungsten versus letting it do it naturally on its own now if you wanted to pre-ball it yourself what you would do actually is flip your machine into a dc positive terminal and actually use your foot pedal or the finger roller style and just gently bump on your amperage very minimal amount and you'll actually see that tungsten start to ball itself back little by little and once you get to your preferred ball size then you just let up off the pedal kill the amperage otherwise like i said for me i'm kind of one of the ones that just kind of lets the alternating current do it on its own and just let it naturally happen now amperage ranges for aluminum are of course just like any other metal it's going to depend on the thickness of it now for me today i'm going to be running roughly around 110 amps for the thickness of material plate we have here now since i have a remote foot pedal which means i can adjust my amperage as i see fit technically i can max that machine out whether it's top out is 200 amps 400 amps whatever it may be and i can just use the pedal to adjust but since i know from previous experience on a thickness of metal of this i'm not going to need well over 200 amps no maybe at most once this plate gets up to operating temperature i may have about 80 amps on the pedal adjustment but like i said before having the pedal gives me full range of adjustment as i see fit to that puddle so if i see it's too cold obviously i can get on it more it gets too hot i can let up and lower my amperage to control that puddle the way i want it to perform so for the weld on aluminum we are going to be doing what we call a lap joint where it's two plates actually lapped on top of each other now also with aluminum it is not really a cup walkers puddle it is definitely more of a freehand and dab style not saying you can't walk the cup with it but it's definitely not as easy versus carbon or stainless so what i'm going to be doing the freehand style like i said where i'm going to be holding the torch kind of like a little pencil propping my arm up against that table for support and i'm going to be dabbing this rod into the puddle about every eighth of an inch i'm going to do a dab now one of the things too with aluminum it's a kind of a little extra liquidy if you will so which means it's a hungrier puddle so actually when i do my dabs it's not going to be just quick little dab flicks of the rod into the puddle i'm actually going to be kind of nudging the rod into the puddle so basically about every dab i do every eighth of an inch i'm also going to be allowing that puddle to eat about an eighth inch of the rod every time to kind of help it bulk up so that way it doesn't kind of face plant on itself So that humming and kind of buzzing sound you were hearing, that actually is the alternating current where it's flipping negative to positive. So definitely with direct current, electronegative, with normal with TIG, you're not gonna hear that buzzing or really anything. With alternating current, that humming buzzing sound, that is completely normal, but some people find it a little annoying to listen to because if you do it a lot, yeah, it can get a little irritating if you will. But like I said, it's completely normal because that is our cleaner scavenger effect of that weld. Yeah, because when you're trying to weld on DC negative, that puddle will not form. Comparing running alternating current on aluminum versus direct current electronegative like you would running carbon steel, stainless steel, it is a big difference visually in the end result. So alternating current with the bead I did here on this lap joint, you can see it's very clean. The puddle's nice and uniform. So that meant I was doing everything pretty much right, if you will. Now, the other plate I have here ran on DC negative. It is pretty visually unpleasing. Well, because without that alternating current, where it flips into the electropositive side, which like I said before, is a cleaner scavenger effect. I could not actually clean the surface, if you will, to actually allow me into the real aluminum puddle. And the only way I could really do it to get to the real aluminum puddle was I had to heat this thing up so much to burn that film out that the end result you can see is very displeasing. Basically, the puddle would not form. It would not run right. It almost kind of looks like I was running over some pot metal or doing some really rough metal if you will reasons we want to run alternating current well do you want kind of an ugly looking weld or do you want something that's nice and clean uniform and in the end result just looks good